Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, this is my 6th chapter, chapter number 6 to which I am going to discuss. The name of this chapter is maintenance of divorced Muslim women. So, in this lecture I would like to discuss procedure through which Muslim divorced women, women are entitled to get maintenance from their husbands what are the procedures by which Muslim female would be entitled to get maintenance against their husband, what is the purpose, what are those various statutes under which Muslim female are entitled to get maintenance. So, all these things would be discussed in this lecture. Before I start different statutes, I would like to highlight the purpose of maintenance, the logic behind recognition of this concept in law and then after three important statute under which Muslim females, Muslim women are entitled to get maintenance. So, let us start with the quote of with the remark of Prophet Muhammad, which Prophet Muhammad himself made remark about maintenance. So, once he said that every Muslim male should provide basic necessities to the people, to the destitute person, to the people who are unable to maintain themselves, who are poor. So, every Muslim should be kind towards poor people should provide something to those Muslims who are unable to maintain themselves. When we talk about maintenance, it means we are talking about bare necessities of life like fooding, clothing and shelter, roti, kapda or makan if we talk in Hindi. So, these three things are very vital, very important for the survival of human being and law should provide mechanism through which poor people cannot be deprived from the benefit of food, from the benefit of clothing, from the benefit of shelter. So, these things have been concern of every democratic country since uh, or you can say after these three important areas fooding, clothing and shelter, these uh, things are very essential for the survival of human being. So, Muslim law also recognizes, also talks about provisions, procedures, so that poor people or dependent person should be provided financial assistance. Particularly since I have chosen this topic as per uh, the syllabus that maintenance of divorced Muslim women, so I must confine towards this topic without uh, talking about other things. So, you see how Muslim women who are unable to maintain themselves, Muslim female who is not in position to maintain herself should be provided financial assistance, should be provided 
food, clothing and shelter. Firstly, by harassment, because this liability to maintain or liability to provide maintenance to wife is not ethical or it is not a matter of ethics, but it is matter of legal obligation. Law has imposed duty upon men that you that that husband should take responsibility to maintain his wife or his children or his parents who cannot who are not in position to maintain them, themselves. So, with this idea of uh, Muslim law has evolved three different mechanism under which Muslim diverse women are entitled to get maintenance from their husbands. So, as a matter of right Muslim Muslim wife can get maintenance from her husband, but you see law is different. How law is different for you all might be knowing about article 14, 15 and 39. Before I start this topic, I would like to throw some light on article 14 of the Indian constitution which talks about equality, a right to equality every person is equal in eye of law. Article 15 talks about article 15 prohibits the state from making any kind of discrimination on the ground of race, caste, sex and so states shall not make any kind of discrimination on the ground of race, caste, sex. So, this is specifically stated under article 15 of the Indian constitution. But on the other hand under article 15 clause 3 it is specifically provided that nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children. So, it means article 15 clause 3 gives liberty power to the state particularly legislature to make law for women and children and that law cannot be tested, cannot be inquired by the court of law on the ground of sex or. So, article 13 clause 3, article 15 clause 3 gives power to the state to make law for the benefit of for the betterment of women for the betterment of children. So, in accordance with the provision provided under article 15 clause 3, parliament enacted a special legislation for women and children. I would like to refer some important legislation. For example, the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005, the protection of the National Women Commission Act 1991 and according to that legislation right now we have National Commission for Women, State Commission for Women. So, parliament enacted these special legislation in accordance with article 15 clause 3. Article 39 which talks about DPSP directive is principle of state policy wherein it is specifically provided that it is the constitutional duty of a state to provide livelihood to its citizen women and children. So, in accordance with the provision of article 39 of the constitution, a state should take responsibility to provide livelihood to provide adequate means of livelihood to the citizen to the children or and to the women. So, all these things I um, have referred only because of so that you can get entire information about uh, rules regarding maintenance from where uh, we have got authority or from where 
legislature have got authority to make a special legislation for the betterment of Muslim women. Now, come to this point right of maintenance of Muslim uh, women, how a diverse how a diverse Muslim women can get maintenance from her husband. There are three important laws under which a divorced Muslim women can get maintenance from her husband. The first statute is the first type of law is that is Muslim personal law. So, Muslim personal law also permits Muslim female, Muslim married divorced women to get maintenance from her husband. <clears throat> the second important legislation is the Code of Criminal Procedure 19 1973, in brief that is referred as CRPC 1973, section 125 CRPC talks about maintenance. So, I will discuss one by one. This is the second statute under which a divorced Muslim woman can get maintenance from her husband. The third important statute is the Muslim women in bracket protection of rights on divorce act 1986. In brief that is referred as the Muslim Women Act 1986. So, these are three different laws under which a Muslim women can get maintenance from her husband. I would like to discuss one by one. The first important law under which Muslim female can get maintenance that is Muslim personal law. As I have already highlighted in my previous lecture that there is a special legislation for Muslims. The name of that legislation is the Muslim law personal, the Muslim in bracket application of personal laws act 1937. In brief that act is referred as the Shariat act 1937. With the help of this slide, I would like to explain these three different statute under which a divorced Muslim women. You see, you look at this on the screen, I have referred ayat 241, ayat 242, surah 2nd. These are two important ayat surah 2 and here you see Muslim personal law section 125 CRPC and third is Muslim women protection of right after divorced act 1986. So, I have prepared this slide, so that you can get entire information about rule relating to maintenance of divorced women. So, now I would like to highlight salient feature of these three different statute. Now, as I said the Shariat Act 1937 which was enacted in the year of 1937 just to identify those 10 areas where Muslims should be governed, Muslims should be regulated by their personal laws, not by any other laws. So, for that purpose the Sharia Act 1937 was enacted. Section 2 of this Sharia Act is very important which you need to understand. Section 2 prescribes 10 subject matters as personal matters of the Muslims. 10 subject matters here I mean section 2 talks about personal matters of Muslims. Section 2 prescribes 10 matters as personal matters of the Muslims. For example, marriage, maintenance, gift, dower, trust, work. So, these are the matters which are enumerated in section 2 of the Sharia Act, which clearly indicates that in these 10 subject matters, Muslim law shall be applied. So, maintenance is one of them. So, 
it is specifically provided under Muslim law that Muslim divorced women is entitled to get maintenance from her husband up to the period of Iddat, meaning thereby a Muslim husband is obliged to maintain his wife up to the period of Iddat. After the expiry of Iddat period, law is silent on that point. That Muslim personal law will not help that female after the expiry of Iddat period. So, you see how even you see even this right of maintenance is subject to fulfillment of certain conditions. No Muslim female, no Muslim women can get maintenance from her husband unless these criteria unless these conditions are fulfilled by her. What are those conditions? The first condition is that she Muslim female who wants to claim maintenance from her husband must not have committed bigamy or cruelty against her husband or adultery or she should not live separately without sufficient reason. If Muslim female who is living separately without sufficient reason she may lose, she might lose her right under this act. She may not be given financial assistance by her husband, if she is not giving company to her husband, she is living separately without reasonable cause. But on the other hand, if her husband is has committed cruelty against her, against her so in where cruelty is committed by Muslim husband against his wife or Muslim husband himself has committed domestic violence, cruelty. So, it, it would be it would be a ground for her to live separately. So, if in this circumstances if Muslim female is living separately, so it would be treated as there there is sufficient reason for her to live separately and living separately she can get maintenance from her husband. Apart from these four conditions, she will have to give company to her husband. If she is not living with her husband, she is not giving company then even in that case she might lose her right of maintenance against her husband. So, you see what I am trying to justify the point which I want to make is that even for a specific period generally 3 months, 4 months or maximum 5 months she can get maintenance from her husband and for that 5 or 6 months for that period she will have to establish before the court that her husband has not committed cruelty, she is living separately with sufficient cause. So, burden lies on her to prove before the court that she is deprived by her husband and her husband has committed this matrimonial wrong, matrimonial fault that is why she should be provided. The irony of law is that even for a specific period, for a very little period, if she wants to claim maintenance from her husband, even though she will have to establish the fact before the court and then after she would be entitled to get maintenance from her husband. So, I think you all have understood the things. Iddat period which I have already highlighted in previous lecture is that period which is counted in different situations. For example, if Muslim husband has given talaq to his wife, divorce to his wife in case of talaq she will have to observe simple and pure life up to 3 lunar month, 3 lunar month and ten, 3 lunar month 10 days. So, Muslim husband is obliged to provide maintenance up to 3 lunar months and 10 days. 
in case of death where husband dies and marriage is dissolved due to death of husband, then in that case the period of iddat is 4 months 10 days. So, she is, is entitled to get maintenance up to that period. If she is pregnant then she will have to wait. You see how it would be very difficult for Muslim female to get maintenance for this short period of time after the expiry of and even it has been it has been seen that with the help of judicial pronouncement then even for this specific period Muslim husband they do not provide financial assistance to their wives either they take plea that they have already deposited some money in, in her account as a dower, they always create problem that dower was, should be treated as maintenance, whereas dower is additional amount which cannot be treated as a part of maintenance. So, they just want to create a doubt in the name of dower. So, Dower and maintenance both are different thing that if something if dower is unpaid. So, Muslim husband cannot take plea that he has already paid dower and that dower amount should be treated as maintenance amount. So, that is maintenance amount is totally different from dower amount you need to understand this thing. So, this is the law regarding maintenance Muslim law relating to maintenance Muslim husband is obliged to maintain his wife up to the period of iddat not beyond that. Now, come to another important statute which is important for in that respect section 125 CRPC section 125 CRPC starts with the language that a person having sufficient means neglects or refuses to maintain his wife may be directed by the court by judicial magistrate first class to pay maintenance to that child, wife, divorced wife or parents as my state may think fit. So, you see I have just used the words used I have just used the words provided under section 125 CRPC. So, I have used that very words provided in section 125 CRPC. A person having sufficient means neglects or refuses to maintain his wife who is unable to maintain herself. This is another important condition that is connected with this a person who has no sufficient means cannot be compelled to give maintenance under section 125 CRPC. So, the first requirement is that person must have sufficient means only then that person can be held responsible under section 125 CRPC otherwise he cannot be held responsible he cannot be compelled to give maintenance to his wife. So, inability to maintain that would exempt a husband from the liability of maintenance. Second element is that female who has come before the court must be in position not to maintain herself. She must not be in position to maintain herself. If she can maintain herself, she has sufficient adequate resources, she can survive on her own means, then she would get nothing from section 125 CRPC. So, these two things uh, application of section 125 CRPC is subject to fulfillment of two conditions which I have already. This right of maintenance is subject to another four important conditions that condition is the first is 
bigamy second is adultery fourth is cruelty and third is cruelty and fourth is where she is living separately without reasonable cause you see muslim female who is seeking maintenance from her husband under section 125 crpc will have to establish before the court that she has not committed any adulterous act she is not involved in adulterous act or she has not committed bigamy nor she has committed cruelty against her husband what the point which i i am trying to make before you if any doubt which is created by muslim husband in the court of law that wife has committed cruelty so mere just merely an allegation against wife that wife has committed cruelty she is living separately without sufficient cause she is not giving company to to her husband if this kind of plea is taken before the court it would be very difficult for muslim female to get maintenance from her husband her husband can take uh, can create problem hurdle to that muslim to his wife and his wife may suffer from this kind of allegation this kind of false allegation which is made by her husband so <coughs> cruelty it would be very difficult for her to prove before the court that she has not committed cruelty against her husband only then she would be entitled to get uh, maintenance against her husband so these four important conditions which are connected with section 125 crpc will also be taken into account by the court while awarding maintenance giving maintenance to that muslim uh, female so now the third important legislation is uh, which i would like to uh, explain with the help of this slide you see the muslim women act 1986 i have mentioned this act in very brief the name of this act is the muslim women protection of rights on divorce act 1986 so i think i believe that you all must be knowing this special legislation so i would like to highlight some important salient feature of this act so that you can understand the beauty of this act for what purpose this act was enacted in 1986 and then after i would like to discuss some important case laws on this point you see there are three important procedure laid down in this act three important procedures are a muslim women who is willing to get maintenance from her husband under this act firstly she will have to get maintenance from her husband and this act makes it clear that muslim husband is only obliged to maintain his wife up to the period of iddat i again and again i have been highlighting this provision this act was enacted by parliament in 1986 just to negate the judgment of supreme court given in delivered in sahabano case mohammad ahmed versus sahabano case in that background this act was enacted by the parliament and in that act since supreme court has laid down that muslim divorced wife is entitled to get maintenance from her husband even after the iddat period so this act was enacted by parliament in the background of that judicial pronouncement and section 3 of this act makes it makes it clear that muslim husband 
is obliged to maintain his wife up to the period of iddat after the expiry of that pe- expiry of that period that iddat period he cannot be compelled by the authority to provide maintenance to his wife after the expiry of iddat muslim female is free to marry with any other so that is why muslim husband is not obliged to give maintenance second important provision of this act is that legal heirs who would inherit the property after the death of that female would be compelled to give maintenance to that muslim female meaning to say that muslim female can get maintenance from legal heirs who would inherit property after her death so legal heirs they have been put on second legal heir means list of the legal heirs means son daughter even husband so son or daughter by you see by virtue of this uh, act they are also under obligation to provide maintenance financial assistance to to the mother to that muslim female and third <coughs> important procedure is that liability has been imposed on state work board section 4 talks about the liability of state work board to provide maintenance so according to section 4 of this act state work board will have to provide maintenance financial assistance to the destitute to the poor muslims and by section 4 of this act liability has been imposed upon state work board to provide financial assistance to those muslims who are unable muslim female who are unable to maintain themselves so <clears throat> these are three different methods through which a divorced muslim women can get maintenance from her husband from legal heirs and from state work board so question may arise that whether these whether a muslim female is under obligation to follow these these procedures one by one or she can get maintenance or financial assistance directly from the state work board without going without knocking the door of legal heirs without knocking the door of husband whether she can directly claim maintenance from the state work board or not this question was raised by the petitioner in a case i would like to discuss that case so here uh, we will have to see the spirit of the legislature what is the main spirit of the legislature so we will have to with the help of judicial pronouncement we will try to understand the role of supreme court in providing maintenance to the muslim women how far supreme court has been effective in providing financial assistance to the muslim women and with the help of judicial pronouncement we would like to understand this uh, the judicial contribution of supreme court well i was talking about law relating to maintenance in that context we have seen that there are three different statutes under which a muslim women can get maintenance one thing which i want to explain you that section 125 crpc which talks about remedy to the aggrieved wherein aggrieved muslim women can get maintenance from her husband so have you ever thought that why this provision has been incorporated in criminal law and you all might be knowing that getting compensation or getting monetary relief that is that is part of civil law so why this thing was not incorporated in civil law and <coughs> rather it was provided in criminal law so the reason behind this is why this uh, maintenance 
rule rating maintenance is provided in criminal law. The logic behind putting this provision in criminal procedure code is just to expedite the matter, just to provide speedy justice to the aggrieved. If if it would have been suppose if it would have be, if uh, it would have been in uh, provided in civil law, then it it uh, would have taken years to year decide uh, maintenance cases and particularly where a female where women who are homeless who have no shelter so if this right if this power to determine maintenance would have been given to the civil civil law so it takes time to decide the dispute civil court takes time to decide the case so that is why this law this type means law relating to maintenance has been incorporated in criminal law just to strengthen just to make this law more effective in order to provide speedy justice this act has been and the important thing is that which i want to add something in this section 125 crpc as you all might be knowing that uh, speedy justice that is the main objective of the constitution right to get speedy justice that is integral part of article 21 of the indian constitution and it is also said that justice delayed is justice denied so if justice is delayed then it would be no justice in eye of law so in order to in order to make in order to ensure fair justice impartial justice speedy justice this maintenance related procedures have been recognized in criminal law this is the main reason due to which section 125 crpc recognizes that uh, agreed women should get maintenance under this act so i have already told you the logic behind recognition of main right of maintenance under this statute not in civil law i think you all have understood the thing which i just explained logic and one thing which i want to add in this uh, lecture that is suppose if maintenance order is passed by judicial magistrate in favor of agreed women if aggrieved women is not satisfied with the amount amount of maintenance fixed by the court then she can file a revision petition in high court she may appeal she, she may go in revision and if revision court thinks fit then the amount may be enhanced the most important thing is that the amount of maintenance which was determined by the court considering the financial status of the husband after one year or two year or three years after sometimes if it is proved before the court by Muslim wife that her husband now the salary of the husband has increased or husband is in position to give more money to that female her financial status has changed so you see court may pass a decree in favor of that female try to understand what i am trying to justify means separate suit for enhancement of maintenance may also be filed by muslim female she may file a suit in the court for the enhancement of maintenance for the enhancement of the amount for example you can understand this in better way 
For example, in the year of 2020, a Muslim woman who had come before the court seeking maintenance against her husband. At that time, her husband was class 2 employee and amount of dower, uh, amount of maintenance was fixed by the court 10,000 rupees as a 10,000 per month as a maintenance allowance was fixed by the court in 2020. In, two th in 2023, her husband now being promoted as class 1 officer and his salary is so high in 2023. In 2023, if husband's salary is increased, then it would be lawful for Muslim female to file a suit for the enhancement of maintenance allowance. She may argue before the court, now her husband has become class 1 officer, so this amount of maintenance would be increased. So, considering the financial status of husband, court may enhance the amount of maintenance and that is very logical and court usually enhance the amount of maintenance in when whenever this kind of suit is brought into the notice of court. So, this thing you need to understand enhancement of maintenance allowance, alteration in maintenance allowance, when, when and why court may alter the amount of maintenance you all need to understand. And you see section 127 CRPC is very important. So, one section 127 is al always read with section 125 CRPC. So, this is all about your section 125 CRPC important provision of the Muslim Women Act 1986. Now, come to the judicial approach, how Supreme Court has tried to make balance between statutory provision and right to maintenance. I just want to put two important case laws before you. You see with the help of this slide you, you see this, you look at this. <coughs> Muhammad Ahmad the leading case on this point is Muhammad Ahmad versus Sabano Begum AIR 1985 Supreme Court. You can see this slide and with the help of this slide, I would like to highlight few important point of this case, so that you can get relevant information about this case. First of all, I would like to discuss facts of this case. You see what happened in this case, Muhammad Ahmad versus Sabano case. Muhammad Ahmad married with Sabano in 1932. They had five children, two sons and three daughters. In 1975, Ahmad, Muhammad Ahmad drove away Sabano from his house. Means, in 1975, Muhammad Ahmad drove away Sabano from his house. In 1975, being aggrieved, Sabano filed a petition before judicial magistrate in Daur. And she claimed that rupees 500 per month should be given, should be fixed as a maintenance allowance for her and for her and children. When she filed a petition in 1975 before Judicial Magistrate Court, GM First Court, in 1978, Muhammad Ahmad filed. A, his counter before the court by stating that he had given divorce to his wife, irrevocable talaq to his wife. You see what you see the ground reality of 
how this case was taken up. He asserted before the court that uh, he had given irrevocable talaq to his wife and he had already deposited 200 per month for about 2 years and deposited 3000 rupees in the court, 3000 rupees in her account. So, documentary evidence was provided by Muhammad Ahmad in the court that 3000 rupees and 2000 per month, 200 per month about he paid 200 rupees about 2 years. So, he wa what he wanted to say? He wanted to say that he had done all the things in favor of his wife and he was not satisfied with his wife that is why he drove away from his matrimonial home. Now, matter before court is whether she was being aggrieved, being divorced wife, she was entitled to get maintenance from her husband or not. So, in the light of section 125 CRPC, judicial magistrate first class passed an order in favor of Sabano by fixing the amount of maintenance, maintenance allowance. Though you see the irony of this law, 25 rupees per month judicial magistrate, you see it was the year of 1980, when judicial magistrate first class passed an order in favor of Sahabano and 25 rupees was fixed, 25 rupees per month was fixed as maintenance allowance. That amount was not adequate to meet the challenges of Sahabano nor her children. So, she had also claimed that maintenance should be given to her not only to her, but to her children, five children also. So, Sahabano filed a revision petition in high court. Revision petition was accepted by high court and, and the high court of Madhya Pradesh enhanced the amount from 25 to 179, 179.20 per month. So, this amount was good and adequate to fulfill the demand of Sahabano. Being aggrieved, Muhammad Ahmad went in appeal. He challenged the legality of judgment passed by MP High Court on the ground of violation of personal law. He contended, Muhammad Ahmad, with the help of his counsel, contended before the court that it, it would be judicial intervention in Islam if if he is directed, if Muhammad Ahmad is directed to provide maintenance to his wife after the expiry of Iddat period. This is the first contention, this is the first plea which he took before the Supreme Honorable Supreme Court. Second plea which was taken by the appellant in Supreme Court that section 125 CRPC has no application. In case of Muslim, after the expiry of Hiddat period, because it is in violation of Sharia Act. So, Supreme Court by referring Ayat 241 and 242 of Surah 2 of the Quran with the help of that text Quran, Supreme Court said that it is specifically provided even in ayat 241 and 242 of the Quran that Muslim husband should provide financial assistance to his wife, if wife is not in position to maintain 
herself and it would be a good service towards god allah if muslim husband provides assistance to their dependent particularly women and children so supreme court finally held that section 125 crpc has secular character and it is applicable to all the religion whether party belongs to hindu or muslim so it is it has secular character and application of section 125 crpc is not in violation of sharia act this is the first second important observation which i would like to refer in this clause that is supreme court for the first time held that a muslim a divorced muslim woman is entitled to get maintenance even after the expiry of iddat period provided that she remains unmarried so you see what what would be the consequences of this judgment when supreme court said that muslim divorced women is entitled to get maintenance permanent alimony maintenance from her husband even after the expiry of iddat period provided that she remains unmarried so she would be entitled to get maintenance from her husband for her lifetime remaining period this judgment was debated argued by a different forum or different forum and hue and cry was made by muslims as a result of that parliament took cognizance and parliament enacted special legislation the muslim women act 1986 the purpose behind enacting that special legislation was to retain the past practices of islamic law after the commencement of this legislation the previous practice of islam is has been retained now i would like to discuss second important case which has uh, which is also treated as important case on maintenance that is secretary tamil nadu work board versus sayed fatima nachi air 1996 supreme court this is another important case where in supreme court held that a divorced muslim woman is entitled to get maintenance without following the order prescribed in this act supreme court for the first time you see in 1996 that act was enacted in 1986 this act as i said was enacted by the parliament only to negate the judgment of supreme court so supreme court what supreme court said that considering the plight of uh, indian muslim women supreme court held that a divorced muslim women is entitled to get maintenance directly from the state work board without knocking the door of her husband nor her relatives if her relatives are not in position to provide maintenance or she has no relatives husband is also husband has also done his job after the expiry of iddat period he can't be compelled by as per the mandate of the statute so it is the duty of state work board if she has come before the court she is not required to go to her husband or to her legal heirs after getting negative orders from her husband or um, legal heirs she should come before the state work board she is not required to observe this kind of 
this kind of stages. So, without having negative order from legal heirs or husband, she can directly claim maintenance from the state work board and subordinate court what you see that the important thing is that which supreme court held in this case supreme court directed the subordinate court that subordinate court should pass decree in favor of muslim female directing the state work board to provide financial assistance to those muslims women who are unable to maintain themselves so i think and this is very good judgment and now supreme court has cleared all the doubts after uh, giving this judgment and i think with the help of this case you all would be in position to have complete understanding about maintenance of divorced muslim women i have covered in in this lecture i have covered section 125 crpc I have also covered the law relating to maintenance provided in Muslim personal law and Muslim Women Act 1986. In addition to this, I have also highlighted Sabano case and this Fatima Vivi case, so that you can get entire information about maintenance. So, with this, I would like to conclude this lecture. And I hope that I do believe that you all have understood the things clearly which I have discussed in this clause. Thank you very much. Thank you.